electoral analysis is largely still a grey area in Zimbabwe. This has led to more questions than answers with regards to Zimbabwean elections, particularly youth voting trends and patterns. Youth are estimated to constitute over 60% of Zimbabwe's entire population. Furthermore, youth are estimated to represent about 44% of Zimbabwe's electorate, yet youth have the lowest level of voter registration and the highest reluctance to register to vote among Zimbabwe's electoral demographics. In 2023, for the first time ever, millennials will be the largest voting bloc in Zimbabwe. And with that comes a lot of power. My name is Mbai Nashichvata. I'm 22 years of age and in 2018 I voted. In 2023, I'm also going to vote. When we are talking about elections, um, I believe that it's a very interesting topic, which uh, the youth usually talk about. And I, I feel like a lot of um, some youths, they are not voting because they feel left out um, after the election period. It is important for us as the youth to be considered before the election period and also after the election period. Uh, for example, most of the youth, they feel that they are only um, considered during the election period, uh, be it for rallies and campaigns. And after the election period, no one really cares about us or about what we are doing. Mm, I think elections are important because we all know that Zimbabwe is a democratic country. So as it is democratic, um, people have to select their leaders. Um, individually, it is necessary for me to vote because, um, after all, I want a leader. People, um, people who don't vote are the same people who say, uh, the leaders were in power, um, they're not doing anything, while well, least they don't want to vote. So people want change. So people have to vote after all. Um, some of the findings that we have had as the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission in terms of the issues why uh, youth do not vote it has been the issues to do with uh, a lack of uh, information amongst the youths. That, that's one. And then number two, we also observed that youths are not participating in elections uh, due to political violence. There's that fear in uh, participating in electoral processes because elections are linked to political activities. So youths really uh, do not uh, involve themselves in electoral issues uh, for fear of uh, political violence. The reality is that most young people are neither apathetic nor ideologically disengaged. They aren't turning out to vote because their lives are not set up for it. Some insist that young people don't vote because the candidates offered to them don't represent their political views. What are young people really thinking when it comes to elections and hope for the future? Hello, my name is Enoch Chiromo, um, 18 years old. Well, I really haven't voted, it's just because of age. But then, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to vote, actually. With the current situation, I don't think there is hope. And if I was to ask myself, there's been over eight elections and nothing has changed as for my opinion so i really don't know but then some are saying it could change and there is hope uh, on the other side i could vote only having faith in myself that the economy and the country will change I see Panaway my elections, Zangwan, and the voting of the Taberongo voter, a Kawanda, passing around an action in Rumbay to a no Kuruedu, Saga, who voted Mazana. I do vote. When I look at it, uh, young people um, have always wanted fast things, 
and uh, they have always wanted uh, anything that they do to then be associated with some form of return. And the return, for me, in my own view, would be something that is instant or that they would see uh, instantly. And this also has limited uh, young people to then be involved in the whole electoral process. When you look at the electoral process, I haven't seen any instance whereby you then come to see that someone is actually paid to go and vote. So because of that, when you look at the nature for young children or young people right now, you would see that a lot of them would want to then get or be involved in something that they get a return out of. Yet they don't even seem to understand the whole process, whereby now they need to understand that whenever they uh, get involved in an election, uh, there is actually some certain change that they so much deem, which will actually be able to, to, to help them uh, in any decision that they might want to do in future. So it's just about looking at the short-term uh, effects rather than the long-term effects of anything. Hi, my name is Eunice. So personally, I think that the young people, the youth, they are not voting because they have this mentality that even if they, they vote, their votes are not going to count. Like some of them, they are ignorant. This other time I was talking to my, I was discussing with my friends and I asked them why they didn't vote. They didn't even he, have a reason for, for not voting. So I think sometimes it's ignorant and sometimes it is the mentality that the youths have that even if they fought, their votes are not going to count. Young people not voting is not a new phenomenon. Younger generations have always voted at lower rates. And this isn't just a Zimbabwean problem. Most nations around the world and within the African continent have a hard time getting young people to vote too. In countries such as Tunisia, Uganda, Mozambique, and the United Kingdom, they have the same challenge. It's important that young people vote and act based on facts over opinions so that they can accurately vote and make a decision that will benefit them and their country in the long run. If young people get the right voter education, they could possibly come out in numbers since they understand the key role they have to play. Voting is more likely when you feel you have a stake. Despite their growing numbers, Zimbabwean youths are underrepresented in governance and their aspirational needs in areas like employment and education are often met with disappointments. Hello everyone, my name is Mufaro Zingai and I'm 22 years old. Um, in 2018, I did not vote. And I know I had just turned 18 for a couple of months, but um, I, th I think there was a huge sense of uh, uh, youth and everybody trying to vote and everyone participating in elections. But I think for me, the personal challenge was uh, the requirements to vote. I needed proof of residence. I needed all sorts of requirements and as a young person, I had a challenge in getting those. Voter education is the process of uh, informing voters about uh, electoral issues. In fact, uh, voter education helps in uh, election administration in its task of uh, delivering a free and uh, fair election. So what voter education does is to oil the election process so that uh, everybody can uh, participate from an informed point of view. So voter education creates that knowledge for participation, especially in our youth uh, citizenry who must be part and parcel of uh, an election uh, process. Hello, my name is Kudai Ganda. I'm 24 years old. Uh, in 2018, last election, I didn't vote because I didn't even register. I didn't even bother to register because I thought it won't make any difference, voting or not voting. We talk of an emerging generation that is ready to lead. A growing body of literature shows that voters tend to vote for candidates who share their own social demographic profile. A key reason for this is because they believe those candidates are more likely to promote their preferences and interests. If political representation is important to voters, 
we might expect young voters to demand better descriptive representation by supporting younger politicians. But if there are no young leaders to vote for, how can they vote? How will they know their interests will genuinely be served? So, uh, hello guys, uh, my name is Carissa Chigarino. Uh, I'm 29. What I think about um, uh, elections, I think uh, elections are important because um, uh, it's, it's everyone's right. So, yes, I did vote um, in the last elections uh, and I'm going to vote in 2023. I, I think uh, everyone should vote uh, uh, because that's the benchmark uh, of, um, a, of, of, of your rights. If you want to be a leader, uh, then you can. Uh, you should register to vote. Uh, there's no way you can be someone uh, being uh, a councillor or an MP without uh, being registered to vote. When it comes to uh, the electoral processes, they are under the Portfolio Committee of Justice and Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Uh, so that Portfolio Committee is the one which uh, then looks at the processes when it comes to the electoral processes. But however, as a Portfolio Committee, we thought it's also important for us to just be able to conscientize the young people when it comes to uh, what uh, is uh, what 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 are the rights that they have and what is then involved when it comes to to the whole electoral processes and also what uh, legal bodies are available for them to be able to be represented. Uh, adequately. Of course, we have had the Zimbabwe Youth Council Board being constituted. We are so happy because of that. And also, it's something that we have made noise as a portfolio committee whereby we're saying there's need for us to be having that Zimbabwe Youth Council Board. And however, we also had to also make noise on making sure that at least uh, we, 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 we conclude on the National Youth Act. And the National Youth Act also is one which then looks at even the quota system uh, whereby we are also going to be having decision-making positions also being making sure that they are there to that. So when we look at that as a portfolio committee, this is what we have done. So that even on the electoral process, when it comes to us going through the electoral process, young people will then be able to understand that we've got the voters' role, uh, of course, which is there, which they're supposed to be involved in. And also, they're supposed also to be then, uh, they've got uh, some certain rights whereby they're also supposed to be also elected, even becoming councils, uh, councillors, also even getting into provincial council, even being MPs. So all this, this is what we've managed to do, to make sure that young people know what is involved and what is at stake for them, so they also get involved. By, by the moment that we also get also uh, represented whereby we've got the board also coming into play. It also helps young people to also understand that it is a very, very important for also getting representation and also getting these boards also being constituted by young people. So I think that we need more use to be uh, to be considered when um, during the election, the election period, uh, maybe for campaigns and also for, uh, taking part maybe for presidential can as presidential candidates. So I feel that if we have youths who are presidential candidates, it's going to motivate the youth to vote because it will be like interesting knowing that my friend, this friend of mine is, um, is part of the electoral candidates for a presidential candidate. It is going to motivate me to, to be able to vote. So I, I feel that, and also as a woman, we need also young women to be taking part. Because for example, if we look right now in the parliament, yes, we do have the quota system, which is being talked about. We do have women who are in the parliament, but then we don't have that, that the young woman being part of, of the parliament. So when we have women, um, young ladies, uh, taking part in the parliament, it is also going to give us this hope that our views are going to be heard and whatever that we need is going to be talked about. Research consistently indicates that election systems and the preparation many young people receive to become informed voters is inadequate, leading to significant variations in voting rates by race or ethnicity, educational attainment, and other socioeconomic and demographic factors. Some young people are on a mission to do research that helps inform why young people are not voting, whilst also encouraging young people to vote. My name is Nathan Zindikilani. I am 22 years old, a law student at Great Zimbabwe University and the co-founder of NAPO. Um, NAPO is basically a private enterprise that deals with public opinion polling um, in order to help clients in politics, business and governance make better and more refined decisions um, with regards to their areas of expertise. So basically, I came across the discovery that Zimbabwe has a limit of information, especially in the area of elections. So we go into elections without having polls that 
give us information on which candidate is leading or what do voters actually want from an elected uh, member of parliament or president or even a councillor. So what basically NAPOL tries to do is bridge that gap by acquiring um, public opinion through qualitative and quantitative research and polling uh, in order to make sure that we know what the um, voters want as well as what the candidates should be doing. So we believe that by acquiring this information, we can allow for people-centered um, kind of campaigning and people-centered kind of promises instead of what we used of the bridges and a whole lot of other nonsense that we've been getting from political candidates. So NAPOL is different from other think tanks that are funded by NGOs. Uh, it is actually a private enterprise that um, works basically uh, for its money. Um, when asked why probably 2023 is the most important election, uh, particularly for myself, well, personally, it would be the second time I vote. Uh, the first time I voted was in 2018. I was 19 at the time. Um, 2023 will mark the first election when almost 50% of the electorate is uh, made up of people that were born um, after 1980, after independence. So it's a very particularly important election because young people will have the determining vote at the presidential level and down ballot as well. So it's very important in the sense that we have to be able to get young people to go out and vote, which is something that is not a trend, especially with young people. Uh, polls that have been taken by organizations such as Afrobarometer have shown uh, a low level of participation by young people in the past. So the question is, how um, do people work in an election that has um, an electorate that makes up um, half of that electorate is young people? How do you then get those young people to actually come out and vote in such an election? So it is a special election. It has a lot of questions and we'll be looking forward to see how it works out. Basically, in 2023, um, we have to understand that there are two um, sort of facets to elections, which is voter registration as a first and voting itself. And voter registration sort of precedes the voting. So before we can answer the question of whether more young people will vote, the question is, will more young people register to actually vote between now and the upcoming poll? So there's a lot of things that have to be considered. For example, is there an incentive for young people to register to vote? Um, will they find it to be something that's attractive? Do they feel as if they can gain something from the process? And do they trust it as well? Um, so basically, that's the number one question. And then secondly, even if we do get them to register to vote, the question that arises is, do they turn out on election day? Are they motivated enough? Is there momentum? Do they feel that there's a candidate they can vote for that will likely win this election? So basically, if I were to give my odds, I would say um, more young people will likely vote um, out of excitement and out of experimentation as opposed to anything else. I've been taking a look at the voting patterns of youth in Zimbabwe, particularly in the 2013 and 2018 elections. When you look at the 2013 elections, you see that from the total number of people that came out to vote, 44% were youth, 56% were non-youth. Fast forward to 2018, 56% were youth and 41% were non-youth. You see that there's an increase in the number of youth that came out to vote in the 2018 elections compared to the 2013 elections. And this can be attributed to the role that NGOs played, you know, the roadshows that they were having in marginalized areas and encouraging youth to come out and vote. You can also look at, uh, you know, from the political party side, uh, political parties such as the ruling ZANU PF, uh, it carried out youth interface rallies and they were encouraging youth to come out in their numbers and vote in the 20, what, 2018 elections. Also, you can look at the change uh, in the political landscape where we had a new leader, you know, coming in play, comrade uh, president, uh, E.D. Nankagwa, coming in play as a listening president, as a president, uh, you know, that was preaching the message of democracy, the message of peace and uh, encouraging people, you know, to be peaceful always. And I would say that this was one of the most peaceful elections that Zimbabwe had uh, when we look at the 2018, what, 2018 uh, elections. Now, looking at 2023, the question is, is there hope? Uh, are more youth going to come out in their numbers uh, to vote? So yes, I would say that there is hope when we are looking at the number of youth that are going to come out to vote in the 2023 elections. 2013 elections, 44% were youth. 2018 elections, 56% were youth. 
2023 elections, I would say 60% of the voters would be youth because the number of youth in the Zimbabwean population has increased and conditions that favor the participation of youth in Zimbabwean politics are also improving. Civil society has also been playing a key role in voter registration campaigns. The Election Resource Centre is giving incentives to students who want to vote. I'm Solomon Bobosbunu uh, with the Election Resource Centre, uh, ERC in short. Uh, we are currently running a voter registration um, a campaign. Uh, and this voter registration campaign includes a shuttle service where uh, the students are uh, in the vicinity of Harare, the, that is the Poly, Harare Polytech, uh, the University of Zimbabwe and others can call in uh, on our call sender 0808 uh, They book a shuttle uh, as a group, they book a shuttle bus that will take them to the uh, nearest registration center. And then uh, after registration, they stand a chance uh, to win a pizza. We have partnered with um, uh, Joyce Pizza and uh, we are encouraging young people to take this opportunity to go out and register uh, to vote uh, in preparation for the delimitation process, in preparation for the by-election for the 2023 general elections. It's an important initiative. Uh, it's important for young people to take this opportunity uh, because we are providing the support service that they need, either the affidavits, uh, the shuttle bus in terms of access, uh, transport, to the voter registration center. So it is up to you to you up to you young people to take this opportunity to go out in your numbers, to mobilize your fellow young people, to mobilize communities around you. And that just call the to uh, free line. Um, you don't have to pay anything. As long as your phone has a battery, you can call in, you stand a chance to get a pizza. Uh, we are partnering with Joyce Pizza and um, it's a great initiative. All those that want also to join in, can you call in on that particular number 08? 080219. That's the election resource center to free line. Uh, you will be attended, a shuttle will be coming your way, a pizza might be coming your way as well. Young people feel betrayed by politicians. It is essential that young people are engaged in formal political processes and have a say in formulating today's and tomorrow's politics. Inclusive political participation is not only a fundamental political and democratic right, but also is crucial to building stable and peaceful societies and developing policies that respond to the specific needs of younger generations. The youth are not blind to the fact that presidential candidates target them in their bid to secure the presidential seat, and that the youth are quickly forgotten once they're in power. Generally, young people uh, find it difficult to participate in elections because they feel that the politics in Zimbabwe is dead. This means that um, uh, this is refers to the living politics that scholars have talked about. And this is basically uh, enhancing community action from the grassroots. Most of the time, the politics is coming from a top-down approach where government initiatives and politicians, they come down with um, their own policies and their own ideas. But these ideas and policies are supposed to come down from the bottom, from the grassroots, from the community. And this is referred to as a community effort. So I feel that sometimes uh, young people do not participate a lot because they don't have the space and opportunity for their ideas and policies to be heard. And that is a major challenge in Zimbabwe. Uh, secondly, I think this creates a sense of hopelessness because um, most of the time when we vote, it feels like, because voting is premised on uh, representation and having the people have a say in who governs and how they govern. But we realize that after we vote, we really don't have a say in who governs and how they govern. So I think that is a problem where elections are meant for young people to participate and select their leaders and select the kind of policies that they want. And we are engaged during election time and after elections uh, at CU after five years. So I think that's a really big challenge that young people are experiencing and it discourages them from participating in politics. Mm, I think elections are important because 
we all know that Zimbabwe is a democratic country. So as it is democratic, um, people have to select their leaders. So I think that um, elections are important because now we are given the opportunity and the platform to actually um, select our rightful leaders. For instance, right now we have got um, members of parliament, we have got lo um, local councillors, um, we bring them in parliament when they campaign. Um, they talk about a lot of promises, but they don't fulfill the promises. But when elections come, um, now we are given the opportunity to actually remove them and install people who can bring change and progress in their wards and constituencies. Other observations or findings have also been to do with the issues of uh, feeling being used or being taken advantage of by political parties. If we look at our political parties, we notice that uh, the youths are not at those very high levels and sometimes they then feel uh, participating in elections or even voting will not change anything for them since there is nothing for it. So, what is the solution? How do we get more young people to vote? Let's look at some interesting African case studies. Nigeria's not too young to run campaign, so 75-year-old President Buhari is signing a bill to reduce the minimum age for presidential aspirants. The age has been amended from 40 to 35 years to allow for the youth to run for elections. This is a clear indication of the power the youth hold in the political sphere. Most recent election results show that there has been increased political participation. We have seen increased numbers of young parliamentarians, and this is evident in countries like South Africa and Malawi respectively. Whilst the future is often said to be female, the African future in our case is young, engaged and pregnant with possibilities. Lastly, Kenya's model engages the youth voter base through campaign and outreach programs. Prior to its 2017 elections, Kenya started Youth Vote, a digital outreach initiative that educated and motivated young people to participate in the electoral process. The Why Vote campaign was a collaboration between the International Foundation for Electoral Systems and the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. The campaign adopted a face-to-face -face and door-to-door -door strategy, including a digital campaign and voter educational games. If young people don't vote, it means election results may not truly reflect what the largest population of people actually want. As young Zimbabweans look to the future, they remain hopeful. They still look forward to leaders that will respond to the specific needs of younger generations. So I'm going to vote personally, I'm going to vote. In 2023, I'm going to vote because this time I even registered to vote. I can actually show you my register card, this. I'm a registered voter and I'm going to vote because it's important for, for a youth to vote because you get to choose who you, whom you want, you, you want to be led by. And this country is a democratic country. So I have the right, the right to vote. So you guys should also register to vote because it's important. I think it is very important for us to vote and um, I'm looking forward to the 2023 elections. Most youths are not registered as voters and that's a true fact. Hence the drive that we are having as the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. In fact, the future of any nation is in the youths and uh, there is actually need for us to be able to involve the youths. Uh, I may want to uh, quote uh, something from uh, Kofi Annan, uh, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, who said that uh, no one is born a good citizen and no nation is born a democracy. And if we leave our youths behind, or any, any nation that leaves the youths behind, we will definitely bleed to death. That means a society must nurture its own youth to take over in the, in the, in the, in the future. We need to understand that uh, the young people are the future, and the young people 
right now are the leaders of today. So because of that, they, they are supposed to be involved for any change that they want. They need to be involved in this whole process. And also, we need to also appreciate that we have got the demographic dividend, which we need to capitalize on. Young people have, uh, they constitute 67% of the whole population. So they are very, very important uh, in making sure that at least their interests are also adhered and also addressed. And the young people also are supposed to then be able to, 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 to prepare themselves for also, even in future, even now, for them to, to, to equip themselves with knowing what is involved in the whole uh, economic dispensation that we have. So I think youth participation should not only come during elections. Youth participation must always be around in general politics every, each and every other day, each and every other year, whether we have elections or not. So I think uh, that's my view. But I think in 2023, I really look forward to voting. And I hope that this time, um, the voting process, the election process can be different and can be all inclusive for all young people. So yeah, I might be hoping to vote and see how it goes. Though I don't know what party or any person I'm gonna vote for yet. But at least there is still time and thinking about it is an option as well. Um, youths can continue to register to vote. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission is decentralized in the various provinces and districts. You can get to the 63 district centers in Zimbabwe, register to vote, and go to the 10 provincial offices in Zimbabwe, register to vote, and uh, youths have to make sure that they are on the voters' roll. The requirements for someone to register to vote uh, is basically you need to be a Zimbabwean citizen, and then secondly, you need your national ID or valid uh, passport, and then you carry your proof of residence. If you do not have a proof of residence, you simply fill in your form VR9, which you then deposit uh, uh, as proof of uh, residence and then you are good to go, you register uh, as a voter. Remember, we are still looking at uh, BVR for every voter, and uh, for the youths, uh, the line continues, Warara, Wasara. <laughs>